Hi, I'm Myra Ferguson for Jar Productions, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to make buttons that have an irregular shape using InDesign and N5. Here's an example of a graphic made up of irregular shapes. Each shape can be rolled over to display a larger version of the graphic. Notice that there aren't any conflicts with the proximity of the other shapes and that the areas that would have otherwise been part of a rectangular button aren't interactive. Let's jump over to InDesign to see how to set this up. Here's the document where the graphic is a placed image. I've already made multi-state objects, or MSOs, by selecting a larger version of the graphic that I want to appear, converting the selection into a multi-state object, using the panel menu to add an empty state, and deleting the duplicate object state that was created because only one object was selected. If you'd like to see how to set up this type of MSO for rollovers, see our video, How to Create Interactive Labels Using a Rollover Pop-Up. I want to make invisible buttons based on the shapes with no stroke and no fill. If I make rectangles that enclose the areas that I want to be interactive, in other words, a hit area or where a click or a rollover would register, then there would be overlapping buttons and overlapping buttons won't work. I could try using the pen tool to make the shapes and then convert those to buttons, but you can see that InDesign turns the irregular shape into a rectangle anyway when it becomes a button. The result would be the same as the overlapping buttons issue that I just had. So how can I make buttons that are irregular shapes? The trick is to make multiple, smaller, rectangular buttons. I'll start with a rectangle that approximates a portion of the shape without sacrificing too much of the border. Let's convert it into a button with all the settings that we want. Now, let's Alt drag on Windows or Option drag on Mac OS to make a copy of the button. I'm making the copy of the button using this technique because it retains the button settings. If I copy and paste the button, you can see that my button settings are lost. If I'm going to make a lot of smaller buttons, it's better if I can keep all the settings. I would also note that it helps to make sure that all of your button settings are the way that you want them before making all of the duplicates. Think of this approach as if it were a type of anti-aliasing. I've already got the buttons created for the other sections, so I'll make those visible. Now, let's save and export. And here's our document where we can roll over these irregular shapes to have interactivity where we want the buttons to work without overlapping, which makes the buttons not work at all, without sacrificing large portions of interactive regions, and without having to include areas that we don't want to be interactive. Please let us know in the comments how you're using irregularly shaped buttons in your N5 exported content. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and be sure to check out N5 at n5.us. Thanks so much for watching.